Hello, Hello everyone, everyone and welcome, and welcome to the Ewa channel. channel. In today's video, I am watching the best moments of Ricky Gervais. You disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. He is presenting the Golden Globes Awards. And the idea would be to try to understand them together. But before we begin, I would like to share with you some exciting news. You know, we have an app, Eva Learn English. You can read your favorite summer books or better, listen to them and improve your English skills. The link is in the description. Use the link to install the app and get a discount. Shush. Shut up. You disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding, okay? So he said, disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. It's funny, but it can also be hurtful. So, pill popping, to pop pills means um, to take, you can take pills as drugs and you pop them, like you take them. Disgusting, pill popping, sexual deviant scum. Yeah, so first he calls them pill popping, so they're using a lot of drugs, sexual deviant. A person who is sexually deviant means someone who doesn't have normal or usual sexual habits, but more what we can call perverts. Perverts. So he's calling them perverts. Sexual deviant scum. The scum is the worst. And this means uh, someone who is very unpleasant uh, who usually has done something unacceptable. Shut up! His way of saying hello is like, hello you! <laughs> so he says hello and starts insulting them. Do you find it funny if I started with like saying hello you idiots? If you do, I'll start my videos like that. Be careful. You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. Oh God, he's so mean. I mean, people love him, but he's so mean. To host means to act as a host, like at an event or for a television show like this. It's like to be the presenter. Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Kevin Hart is an American comedian and he makes jokes about everyone, okay? This guy was not invited to host this Globe Award because of his offensive jokes. Hello. Hello. Don't you see me? Uh, what about me? In other words, he was trying to say, I'm the king of offensive tweets. Did you forget about me? Hello? I have been doing the same and I have never been fired, so... Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. Luckily for me, the Hollywood press can barely speak English. So he's trying to say that uh, Ricky Gervais, who is British, writes a very professional and very brief tweet. The foreign press doesn't understand it, so then that's why he didn't get fired at that time. But basically, he's trying to say that people who are part of the Hollywood press are not very clever. Jennifer Lawrence made the news when she demanded equal pay for women in Hollywood and she received, yeah, overwhelming support from people everywhere. There were marches on the street with nurses and factory workers saying, how the hell can a 25-year-old live on 52 million? This is... Of course women should be paid the same as men for doing the same job. They're talking here about equal pay how men get more than women. 
they don't get the same, right? She received, yeah, overwhelming support. And his joke is, yes, I am sure factory workers, nurses, you know, people who have regular jobs, low paying jobs, they have started marches. There were marches on the street with nurses and factory workers. Because how can this 25 year old live on 52 million? So here he's being ironic, sarcastic, saying that, yeah, all the women are supporting you and they are sad because you have only 52 million to live on. And I'd like to say now that I'm getting paid exactly the same as Tina and Amy did last year for hosting this. No, I know there was two of them, but it's not my fault if they want to share the money, is it? That's, that's their stupid fault. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Then he mentions two women who worked as hostesses um, for the Golden Globe too, and apparently they got paid as much as he got paid. I'm getting paid exactly the same as Tina and Amy did last year for hosting this. No, I know there was two of them. And then he goes like, well, it's their fault if they decided to split the money, if they decided to share the money. But it's not my fault if they want to share the money, is it? That's so unfair. All female remakes are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. There's going to be a female remake of Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios because they get guaranteed box office results and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... <laughs> so here he's talking about female remakes. It's something really trendy nowadays um, because productions spend less money making remakes just because women are the main character in these new versions. And that is so sad. If you do win tonight, remember that no one cares about that award as much as you do, okay? <laughs> Don't get emotional, it's embarrassing, okay? That award is, no offense, worthless. If you do win tonight, I thought he said win tonight, win tonight. If you do win tonight, so can you can you hear how he put the words together? If you do win tonight, if you do win tonight. If you do win tonight. Not if you do win tonight. If you do win tonight is making um, focus on the word if you do win tonight, like if you win tonight. Thanks, mom. This is for you. Thank you for all the support. Oh, so no. So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god. Okay? Okay, that was good speech. Thank your agent, your god, and that means go away, but usually in an angry way. Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, <laughs> fifth time. So, we were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people, and I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. So here what he's saying is that many talented people of colour were snubbed, and the Hollywood foreign press are very racist. We were going to do an in memoriam this year. He's saying that they were going to make a memorial, like section in the programme, but it wasn't diverse enough. So it was widely white people who died. It wasn't diverse enough. Diverse means something that is varied, yeah, different. So if you have, I don't know, an African-American, a Jewish, a Muslim, an Arab, a Chinese, um, a white person, and so on, then you have a diverse audience. Not on my watch. Not on my watch.
not on my watch, he says, not while I'm in charge of this program, not while I'm hosting this. Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree, although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. Martin Scorsese. But the thing is that in my country, at least, we say Martin Scorsese. We say it that way, so when you listen to Martin Scorsese, it's really difficult to understand it. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. So theme parks are kind of roller coaster rides, unfair, like Disney World. So he thinks that Marvel movies are not real cinema, they're not like Hollywood movies. As a big fan of Marvel cinema, whatever you guys are saying, I disagree 100%. And then Ricky Gervais is playing around, saying and joking, saying that Martin Scorsese shouldn't know much about theme parks and roller coasters because he's so short, he's so tiny, that he shouldn't be allowed to ride on the roller coasters because you know that there's a kind of height minimum and maximum. Once upon a time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere and by the end, his date was too old for him. So, even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know, <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. There was this premiere of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a lot, apparently a very long movie, haven't watched it, but Leo DiCaprio was there with a girl, but apparently the movie was so long that by the time that the premiere was over, she had already aged. By the end, his date was too old for him. Okay, she became old, and that's why they said, oh, I'm not interested in you anymore. Because apparently, Leo likes dating young girls, only young girls. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it, you, I didn't, you did it. <laughs> Please welcome Sandra Bullock. That was a real low blow. Okay, so he was talking about Bird Box. That's the movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. But he's trying to make a comparison between Bird Box, this movie where if you don't see what's happening, you are alive, and if you see what's happening, you die. He compares this movie, Bird Box, to working with Harvey Weinstein. And, oh God, he is a very well-known producer, and lately he's been accused by dozens of women of sexual harassment or assault. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional, except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I... I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen The Tourist. <laughs> Who has? Um, but no, it must be good because it's nominated. So shut up, okay? <laughs> I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor going around that the only reason The Tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... So he says, everything nowadays is 3D, like three dimensions, except for the actors in the movie, The Tourist. I haven't watched it, so I haven't watched it yet. So I don't know why he's saying that, but I guess that if he's saying that, it's because the characters in this movie were not rounded, or they were not well-directed, or well-developed, or... So he thinks that they are kind of 2D, two-dimensional. Because I'm jumping on the bandwagon. To jump on the bandwagon is like when you're just jumping and joining what other people are saying or doing. I haven't even seen The Tourist. <laughs> Who has? Even if, just because it's successful. So if everybody is saying that the movie is shit, well, he's just saying it because everyone is doing it. He's jumping on the bandwagon. I haven't watched it, but 
I don't know, maybe have you watched it? Let me know in the comments if you have watched this movie, The Tourist, and if it's good or not. And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor. So to quash is like to stop something that you don't want to happen. And then he says, but that's not the only reason. They also accept bribes. So when you accept bribes, it's like you accept money. It's like they paid the press to be there. Have you... Ready? I guess so. Have you seen the tourist yet? <laughs> Have you? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this compilation as much as I did. In my next video, I am quizzing you on Harry Potter. Let's see if you know who says what. Make sure to watch that video. Stay tuned and see you soon. Bye. Bye.